Great, you've done what few have attempted. You pulled your engine out of your car, and now you're in the same boat as my boy Pumphrey. You got a big gaping hole in your engine bay with nothing in it. Well, today we're gonna talk about putting something in that hole that hopefully has a little more power, baby. So obviously putting an engine in and getting it to work is a lot harder than just taking one out. So today, both Job and I are gonna be getting our nucks greasy. We're gonna talk about engine swaps in general. We're gonna talk about why I chose this particular engine for this car. And then at the end, hopefully, we can prove that our research and due diligence is gonna pay off when it starts. <laughs> I'm Zach, that's James, this is Money Pit, and the 8.6 shall live again. Welcome back to the channel. Go ahead and smash that like button. Big thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Raid is a top cross-platform RPG game that guides you through exciting battles against noble kings and dark wizards, all while navigating through warring factions and uncovering hidden prophecies. Speaking of dark wizards, eh, you like it? You know, I can also do this. Raid also announced some huge updates coming later this month. They're releasing a new batch of epic and legendary champions, which look amazing, and they're including a new Doom Tower rotation with two new tough bosses, so be on the lookout for that. Your character could go from looking like this to dominating battles looking like this. Now that's an upgrade. When you want to get a head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get your free epic champion Jotun, who's amazing for the Doom Tower, and in your inbox you'll find 100,000 and silver, 50 germs, and the three ancient shards so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. Now, let's go swap this engine. All right, so before we go getting our knuckles greasy, we gotta talk about a few things. First off, why are you even pulling an engine out of your car? I don't know anymore. I don't remember why we did this. I honestly kind of am in the same boat, but there are a handful of reasons and we can kind of boil it down. Sometimes things break and you need to take the engine out so that you can fix it. Sometimes you just want to replace the engine with uh, the same one, just a new, fresh one. But sometimes, sometimes you want to replace the engine with a different engine. And there's a handful of ways you can kind of go down that road. So there's kind of a spectrum to swaps, and some of them are kind of easy, some of them are in the middle, and some are pretty hard. First, if you're gonna be swapping an engine into a chassis that was designed by the manufacturer to go there, well, it's not gonna be that hard. Then you can kind of get into more difficult swaps where you're putting an engine into a car that was never designed to go there. Think like uh, an LS swap in a Miata. Now, there's a lot of support for that stuff, so you can usually find parts to do what you wanna do, but it is gonna be a little bit trickier and more custom. And then at the full difficult end of the swap spectrum is full custom stuff that nobody's done before. Think Ryan Turk and his 4586. <laughs> oh, Texas. So depending where you land on that spectrum will kind of dictate whether or not your swap's gonna be easy or hard. Now, my man in the field, James Pumphrey, is gonna update us on how our swap's gonna go. Pumphrey, over to you. This is a fifth generation 4AGE engine. So it's a newer version of the engine that came in my car. These were made from like 1995 to 2000 and came in a bunch of Corollas uh, in Japan and some other places around the world. It's referred to as a black top because the valve cover comes from the factory painted black. So why did I want a newer version of my old engine? Well, independent throttle bodies, uh, add more power, sound very cool. The tricky thing about putting this motor into that car is that Corollas in 1995 to 2000 were front wheel drive. So this motor was meant to fit in a car this way. This would be the front. We are putting it in a car this way, so this is the back. <laughs> Basically, we're putting a hamburger in a hot dog bun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that caused a few issues. Um, one of them being the distributor was on the back of the motor and would either hit the firewall and make timing the engine uh, pretty hard. It's just like a space issue. So to combat that, we got a coil on plug conversion kit. No more distributor. Awesome. For that same reason, we got this really trick coolant relocation kit 
uh, to clear up some room on the back of the motor. Also, it's very important to just do basic maintenance on the engine before you put it in. So we threw a whole bunch of fresh gaskets uh, at this thing uh, to make it fresh. No leaks, Ge leaks is for geeks. So luckily a ton of people have done this swap. So there's tons of resources on the internet. We've done a ton of research. We've talked to a lot of really qualified guys, guys who have you know, done this swap a million times. Um, so hopefully all of the work that we put into it before today will pay off today. I hope. All right, the time is now. I'm gonna put this thing in. A ways up. This reminds me of my days on the railroad. I think that's uh, plenty. Okay, keep going. Come down a skosh. We're gonna have to kind of slowly come down and push in kind of there at okay. once, so. Well, so we're, we've got a couple inches of tilt left here, so we're gonna try to max that out. Okay, yeah, we're just gonna need to manhandle that. If you just push down so that clears, I'll drop. You ready? I'm not clear, but clearing. Okay, now I'm gonna bring the whole thing down a touch and push forward. You gotta push that puppy. It's working. Look how strong you are. I'm the strong boy. I'm a man. <laughs> Okay, so progress is good. We've gotten the engine and transmission into the general area they need to go. And that's really the trickiest part. You saw how much we had to tilt it and battle with that to get it in, but it's in. Now the trick is actually just lining up the engine mounts uh, with their spot on the subframe. So right down here, there should be a rubber piece that goes between these. Um, it's like the OEM engine mount. I thought it was weird that it was just gonna be metal on metal. Turns out I was right, it is weird. We forgot to order part that we need to literally bolt the engine in. So the cool thing about working on cars is you make friends doing it. Uh, we realized we need the rubber part of the motor mount and I hit up my boy Gio and he was like, yeah, I have some. I was like, can I have them? And he was like, well, when? I was like, now if at all possible. Car friends are good friends. Thank you, Gio. That motor is in, dude. That motor is in for the first time in months. We have a motor bolted in the roller. Oops. Really wishing I painted the engine bay. But look at how much the blacktop is. <laughs> okay, so when you put an engine back in a car, the first thing you gotta do is bolt up the engine mounts. But the second thing you gotta do is bolt up the trans mount. I'm gonna hop under the car. Uh, right now we have a jack under the transmission. I'm gonna put the trans mount back on. And then we should be like that hog sitting pretty sitting good. We got a motor in. The trans is bolted in. Uh, it's late, so we're gonna take a little break for the night. Uh, come back tomorrow. Connect exhaust. Connect drive shaft. Figure out the electrical with the panic harness, and hopefully fire this guy up. Pop, 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 Stickers. Pop, pop, pop. Stickers, stickers. Now available. It took forever to design these things, but the results are amazing. Stickers. We're printing them right now, so go get them while you still can. Donutmedia.com. Tell them James sent you. There's actually no way that you can do that, but maybe tell yourself under your breath when you hit the cart. Stickers. Hey, welcome back. Good morning. Uh, we're back in the shop. We got Pumphrey outside cleaning some nuts and bolts. And I'm gonna go over what we have left to do today. There is kind of a lot of stuff, but hopefully none of it will be too hard. We gotta get the radiator back in. We gotta fill this thing full of fluids, engine oil, trans oil. We gotta get coolant in it as well. Uh, we gotta do the shifter, exhaust, drive shaft. We gotta get the wiring harness installed and connected to all the things. So uh, then once all that's done, all we gotta do is connect to our ECU, our new Link ECU, and uh, fire this thing up. No problem, right? I am currently connecting the fuel line. Uh, we got a nice new braided line with an and fitting on one end. So getting this connected to the uh, fuel 
I'm gonna hop under the car and put the drive shaft back on. Seem relatively right. <laughs> Welcome back to James's Lube Corner. Today we're lubing up my shaft. You know, is it immature? Yes. Is it funny? Yes. Sorry, I don't make the rules. That's how it works. With the precision of a surgeon. So I'm putting the heater core hoses on right now and it's pretty tight in there. So, while Job is goofing off in the front, not really doing anything, I'm gonna put the shifter back in. The guy sucks at working on cars. How's this go? How's this go? All right, most of the big stuff is in place, so now it's time to play with the spaghetti. This is our old stock harness, which we could try to reuse, but we're not gonna. Instead, we are going with an aftermarket harness made by a company called Panic. Uh, it's made specifically to put this 20 valve motor into the 8.6. Uh, every one of these is handmade uh, and should be plug and play to get this thing started. We're also going with a standalone ECU made by Link and Panic has gone ahead and loaded up a bass tune uh, onto the link, so we should be able to start it without futzing with the laptop too much. Clean up that bay, should have painted it. Should have painted it. Should have painted it. Well, let's jam that <laughs> in here. So, I mean, there's a handful of things that uh, at first glance, I don't really know where they go, but the, the nice thing about most of these electrical connectors is that they're unique and you can't plug them into the wrong place. So there's gonna be a little bit of guessing, a little bit of checking, but it's no big deal. Satisfying. All right, so we're down in the passenger footwell where the stock ECU was. We've got our harness fished through the firewall. Now I'm just gonna plug it into what it needs to be plugged into. It'll go straight into the Link ECU here, and then these plugs will connect to our factory ones. Okay, plugged in there. So we've also got a built-in map sensor on the ECU, so we're gonna have to run a vacuum reference uh, into the cabin, straight into the ECU, and that'll let it know what's going on in the engine. Roller coaster. Everything's pretty much wired up. We ran into some hurdles with some unidentified connectors, but the dudes at Panic were awesome and helped us out. Toot sweet. So uh, Job is finishing putting the header on. We got to figure out exhaust, but I'm going to start putting fluids in this thing. All of them. Oil. Coolant. Transmission fluid. Guy. This guy hasn't had anything to drink since he left Japan. So we've got oil in the engine, we got most of the coolant in the coolant system, and then we need to put some gear oil in the transmission. Okay, so Pumphrey got the battery in, which means the system has 12 volts for the first time in some time. So now it's time to hack into the mainframe and get our ECU up and running. So I just plugged into the ECU for the first time and I brought up the Link software. Now I have to unlock the ECU with the unlock code that Panic supplied us. And then we're off to the races. Got to load a map, probably do some calibration. I don't think there's too many steps between here and starting. So while Zach is calibrating the ECU, I'm gonna put on basically the whole reason that you get this engine. Shiny trumpets for the ITBs. Oh, yeah. Really wish I painted the bay, you know? Just, it would have taken five, six hours. Just really wish I would have done it. Now there's an engine in there. Can't paint it now. Let's say this thing's ready to crank. But you never know start. what's gonna happen, but we know what has happened, okay? We took the engine out of this bird months ago. I spent all that time, and even before that time, researching talking to experts, making new friends. I started relationships because of this. We put the engine in, we wrestled the crane. It's working, push forward, you gotta push that. How strong you are? Mm. Who's strong boy? Okay, keep pushing. Mm. Okay. Mm. We wired it up. We 
cleaned up gas. Really wish I painted it better. We put on the trumpets and now we're gonna try and start it. Collective, fingers crossed. Come on, Money Pit Everybody Nation. And you Come can on, Money Pit Nation. We need this luck, baby. We need this luck, all right? Y'all got us. Did we do a good job? Not even worried. Well. I think we're running. I think we just need to adjust timing uh, yeah. in a pretty for real way. So let's get that figured out and then this thing will run. You can see the proof. All right, so I just went into the ECU and I attempted to adjust our base timing at idle. So hopefully we'll be a little bit closer to where we need to be and hopefully it'll run a little bit better. Give it a little. Well, we gave it a little rev and as it came back down, it uh, shut off. I mean, not too sure beyond that, but I wanna make sure all cylinders are making heat. Rear two are a lot hotter than the front two. What does that mean? There is a chance that it means we forgot to put gas in the car. The most precious fluid of all. All right, we got some gas in her. Let's see if she acts like she wants to run now. Let's see, let's find out. We technically got this car started and we're one step closer to driving this thing every weekend. Shredding the streets. And I think this thing is honestly gonna be a load of fun. This engine's sweet. Uh, it sounds pretty cool as is, but it'll sound great once it's shredding. So as we've been kind of harping on throughout, you know, Pumphrey did a lot of research at the beginning of this and I did a little bit. Uh, which is important to making a project go smoothly. And I think we had a lot of I's dotted and T's crossed, but you can see that we still ran into some issues. And that's kind of how it's gonna go. I mean, this is a relatively simple swap, but we did put a front wheel drive engine in a rear wheel drive car. Uh, that took a lot of little parts, little pieces to come together. Uh, the amount of research we did, the number of conversations I had with people who have done this swap before uh, really helped out. And I can't wait to see how fast we can do it the second time when I pulled the engine out to paint the bay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two watching us slam this engine into Pumphrey's 86. So if you did, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And you can follow me on Instagram at Zach Job, follow Pumphrey at James Pumphrey, and Dona at Donut Media. Yeah, and if you want to see more Money Pit episodes or just videos in general featuring this car or any of the other cars you've seen in the background, let us know. Uh, we make these videos for you guys and it helps to know what you want to <laughs> yeah, see. For real. <laughs> All right, we love you. I love you.